so it's cold and there's a potential freeze I'm doing absolutely nothing um, to get some information and some feedback and I'm kind of excited to finally be at this point um, oh my gosh I don't know if you, <laughs> the chickens got scared by that rabbit anyway I'm doing nothing tonight and that's because this is only uh, you know forecast 35 potential you know light frost it's not a hard freeze um, last year they forecasted for 29 and it got down to 22 21 even um, so they're not always accurate so that's why I say tonight could be a freeze or a frost you never really know um, it's a massive front that's come through a lot of cold air sitting on top of us for all day today since since last night um, so it just depends there's so many factors and so this might be a little bit of a ramble but um, there's a lot of things to consider if it's a frost you protect if it's a freeze then you protect your your smallest nucleus your you protect your trunk basically um, the frost cloth or the the stuff on top uh, doesn't have a lot of value if it's going to be a prolonged six hour plus um, for citrus you know low 20s or anything like that oftentimes you know sheets and things can do more harm than good I've used plastic and I've used sheets they both have their place you absolutely have to make sure you get the plastic off if it's a sunny day the next day um, because it just the big fluctuations are what really stress our plants more to begin with you know when we have a nice steady decline a mile you know like as plants get acclimated they they lose their leaves and they toughen up and all but when we go like last year last January from 80 80 down to 22 in literally in like 48 hours um, that's what kills a lot is that big fluctuation and so if you leave plastic on you're gonna exacerbate you're gonna you know confuse your plants even more so um, so the reason I'm doing nothing is because my plants are gonna toughen up for it they're gonna uh, learn from it but they I didn't always treat them this harshly um, when they were first planted those first couple years um, I really tried my best to take care of them and I have some old footage to show you this is this is wind protection for the winter for the citrus um, the wind really whips out here and so you'll see a lot of random boards up this is the uh, most comfortable wall ever. No, just kidding. <laughs> but um, so this was because I wanted to build some microclimate for a citrus tree that's right down here. And um, yeah, he's got a lot of love really quick, but um, it's a permanent solution. So it's about five feet from the trunk, and uh, he'll be able to fill in this space on the south side and get a little bit more reflective heat during the winter and hopefully do well. So this is more temporary protection, um, basically just to block the wind. That's a newly planted citrus, so this will be an interesting experiment. I can add a few more bags when it gets extra cold, um, but it's a little donut. Danny helped me put some finishing touches on this wall. Um, it's also for wind protection, and um, it's going to be... Uh, maybe getting this holes filled in and get a little nicer. All those systems I got good feedback from. The, the donut rings protected those trees fine. They made it through the winter. But the biggest thing that I've been working towards is trying to block wind. Out here, at first, it was just an open field. It was really exposed. And I felt like it was the winds, the biting wind, that was chilling um, the plants faster, basically. that's So there's conduction convection and radiation as ways that heat gets transferred or, or you lose heat um, and here's a cool cool image uh, to check out but basically um, if we block wind then we're slowing the convection heat loss um, with the mixing of the air as the warm air because the ground is constantly radiating up um, heat you know even you know a few feet down it's going to stay 60 it's always got some heat to give if we're talking about trying to stay above 32 but it's just about keeping it in that plant zone close to the ground instead of losing it. So leaves are really valuable. A citrus tree can, you know, protect itself once it's got a good chunk of leaves much more than a first or second year tree. Sheets and tarps, uh, you don't want them touching the leaves. That's a big one. You guys probably know that. But that's because, especially with cotton, um, you're going to then conduct heat, which is the other form going from a, a solid, like pull heat out of the leaves because the wind is going to hit the top of that sheet and especially if it's wet it's even faster um, it's just gonna pull the heat out and you've 
if you're using a sheet and it's wet, then it has zero value anyway. Cotton kills, right? If you're a camper, a hiker. Um, and almost always, as it is right now, our massive cold fronts come with a lot of rain. That's why I'm shivering right now and our, our winters are so ridiculously harsh and cold is because it's a really, really wet cold. That's why uh, sheets don't really help and, and that's why I'm, I'm not doing them anymore, definitely not right now. Um, so as far as um, the covering of the top, I'm, I create temporary structures. I use sticks and poles, anything to um, get the sheet or the tarp uh, off of the top of the plant. Because at that point, you're trying to protect your leaves. You know, you're trying to protect the whole thing because this is just a little snap. Um, and if you just dress it on top, you, you're going to damage a lot of those leaves um, anyway. It's kind of like a 50-50, not necessarily even worth it. Um, so anyway, um, but if you have a hard freeze, you still want to do something. Um, what I do is I just, I pile up the material. So mulch, leaves, everything up against the base of the trunk as high as I can possibly go. And I'll try and find some images. Here's navel orange. You can see where the pile of here's uh, sugar apple. See, didn't go down to the ground because I had piled leaves on top. Here's a um, star fruit, and boom. This is where the leaves were on the interior. This is all most likely dead. Not going to regrow up there, but at least there's something. the leaves that you get if they are super lightweight and full of air they don't provide near the same insulation protection excuse me as a more broken down mulch compost or even soil i mean soil is is even better but it's a little bit harder to add and take away quite as quickly um, so the other cool thing about our freezes is how wet they are and what this means is that they're usually more insulated against the really quick spike changes so like um, because there's just tons of moisture right now the soil is fully saturated the air is fully saturated um, everything is kind of uh, moderated or connected but at the same time when we get the massive front everything is moderated and connected down to that level and so that's just something to understand when it you know convection is the mixing of the air when the air is really wet the air is mixing a lot with the surface of the tissues uh, you know it's harder to uh, keep those things separate and at that point you throw your hands up in the air and you're like ah oh, what do i do well um that's where you got to add heat a stockpile of clay pots i wonder what that's all about all right so over here um, it was a temporary structure built with uh, electrical conduit and um, it was really cheap. I had a pipe bender, um, definitely under 100 bucks, and uh, it's protecting a grapefruit tree. Um, even though this doesn't have plastic on it, I could snap on some plastic real quick and provide some real deal cold protection. Um, also, this is still blocking some wind and providing a little bit of cold protection, even with just the shade cloth, um, just kind of slowing, again, the mixing of the air, the convection cooling. Uh, it's going to hold the heat that's going to radiate out a little bit longer. Um, but we're over here because I have one of these set up. <sighs> Let's chuck. Oh, actually, that's what I want to show you. Well, anyway, some more pots. I wonder what this is about. What's going on? Let's go someplace else. All right, you guys. So this is my heating system. It consists of a foundation block some concrete blocks, a cinder block, and dun, 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 some clay pots. So this was inspired by the, a little viral video, like a space heater. Um, there's some guy was heating his room with a, a candle and some clay pots. And so I thought, okay, I wanna be able to protect my trees by just bringing heat to the situation. But I also, I'm familiar with like smudge pots and orchard heating. And so I, I wanted to combine the both. So this, oh, sorry. It's full of uh, a tiki torch and a uh, mud dauber's been busy. So this hasn't been used since last year. And I don't really have, um, this is empty actually. I won't be able to light it for you. But, um, but essentially, whoop, 
the uh, the tiki torch um, <coughs> will burn for about uh, five six hours and it gets really hot so um, the clay pots take about an hour hour and a half to heat up but after that it's radiating a lot of heat so all the leaves above help kind of catch that but the other thing that happens here in the same with smudge pots it creates a lot of smoke tea torches burn pretty dirty and having all of this above to catch it it makes it burn even dirtier so there was plumes like um, you saw how black it was there it was um, on the sides and just kind of billowing out um, a little bit of, uh, not a little bit, but so not enough to scare the neighbors, but a good bit of smoke. So um, uh, the smoke's real important, you know, CO2 is a, a greenhouse gas, we all know that, so it's creating a greenhouse effect to trap in some heat, and that could be really effective on um, a cold day. So I don't have um, enough experience with it, uh, unfortunately. Uh, I did not light them <laughs> in the 22 degree freeze um, so it's still in trial phase so I'm just I'm giving you uh, my experiment halfway done so here's another simple one at the base of this citrus um, it's just three pots I imagine it would be effective with two um, it could even be effective with one because really your half of it's about just putting the smoke out in the air so um, as far as building it you uh, just need something that's threaded on top and uh, nuts, uh, I mean, uh, nuts and washers and uh, and I get all this stuff from estate sales. So these are kind of scattered all over. I have um, six of them built now. It kind of takes time to acquire all the clay pots and things. And um, eventually I hope to have them as kind of like as a proven technology. I hope to have, you know, like a established mango tree with four of them one on each side one on each side and and a wind block that I just put up for the winter to really make a, a cool uh, cool system for protecting these trees anyway I am a frozen popsicle I can barely think straight so I should end it here um, hopefully you guys got something from that and uh, if there are any questions or you need a follow-up just uh, ask me in the comments below I'll catch y'all later peace